Yeah. So for the next part of that, when you said something about they, they, they want to eliminate positions and everyone has to rotate positions, like for the most part, I'm really good with that to a certain age. And most of the time I'm good with that. Uh, when they said systems, that they want to eliminate systems. First of all, I don't know how the hell you're going to do that because I don't know how you would take a coach and say, or the players and say, okay, we're not allowed to do any systems, go, go and play. So I'm, I would not be 100 sold on this anyways. Um, and does, does, does that contradict what I say about development and positions don't necessarily matter? And um, here's the thing. If you don't have, like, I'm not 100% sold on no systems because even at a young age, a young to a certain degree, but even like a young age, if you want to learn how to play hockey. So I think kids want to, should know basic, basic systems, like, uh, 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 somewhat of a, a semblance of a breakout, some sort of a forecheck, some sort of zone. Yeah, positional coverage, play like for sure. That's positional systems, play. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you don't have to run six different things, but you should you should have something that gives your gives the kids because if not, you're just you're not coaching now. You're, all you're doing is yeah, yeah. guys. So so let me d- t- tighten that one up. So the. The line for me when I think of this is when the kids are old enough where they're not all just chasing the puck anymore, whatever that age is. Because when you have eight eight year olds, they just they they're just starting to get out of everyone chases the puck everywhere, right? So if we're younger than that, then this won't work because if you say, Hey, this is basically the zone you're supposed to be in, they don't listen to that. They're chasing the puck. So if we assume we're past that age, then if we're gonna be if we're gonna be cycling people around positions, the only reason that that makes any sense is in the context of having systems, right? So if you don't if you if you're letting everyone play a different position, but the systems don't matter, then there are no different positions. So what's the difference of who's playing where? So if you're gonna say that we want guys to play different positions, that means they need to learn different positions, and the only way that you learn different positions is by having a system. If you don't have a system, then who knows who's supposed to be where in what situation, right? So the only way that you can actually teach that to kids, how to develop yourselves in different roles around the ice, is if you know basically what positional play you're going to have in each of the zones, which is a system. That's a D zone system, a neutral zone system, an offensive zone system to some degree. And then what to do in given situations. If we're doing a breakout, if we're doing a neutral zone regroup, if we're doing whatever, that means you have to have identified roles of who's supposed to go where. Now you can plug kids in those roles differently, right? So you're going to have a guy play winger and that means in the neutral zone regroup, they have to know what the winger's supposed to do. And if they have to know what the winger's supposed to do, that means that there's a system that he has to follow, right? So in order for the point A to work of guys learn different systems, you can't have no systems because that makes no sense, right? So that's kind of my, my initial thinking about that. It can't work unless you have a structure for them to be somewhat following otherwise they're not learning anything different they're just playing pond hockey that's what it is right that's exactly that's exactly what i wrote down it's just pond hockey at that point which is real good for you too but not that's you don't pay for pond hockey and then and then it eliminates any coaching the only coaching you're getting is uh work harder well what is doing what though i am working hard and you have nothing to correct you have nothing really to learn from the learning how to play hockey so there's a basic fundamental of learning how to play to a certain degree now having said that people people get over um over excited about systems and and all this kind of stuff when they're at youth hockey and i could tell you from both as a player coach and a trainer uh that that the game with the systems you learn in junior usually don't resemble or in youth usually don't resemble what they look like in junior college or pro you know what I mean? So it's it's uh, all this stuff that, like, it's it's so funny. Like, all the stuff that you learn in youth hockey, because they now you're getting to the point where you're studying the games, and it's like every, you're diff, almost different every day. You know, like, if you look at a lot of the junior teams or pro teams, if they would never play, like a youth team would hardly ever play like that. Parents would go, what are we doing? So t- typically the puck comes into your own zone, and, and basically guys leave the zone and they're waiting, standing at the blue line. Wingers are standing at the blue line for a hard stretch pass for a, just to chip it in so you can go get it. That happens a lot. If you did that in minor hockey, they'd say, well, what's this coach doing is an idiot because they don't understand the, the battle that's going on, right? Yeah. So, but that's the systems you learn in youth hockey or don't resemble anything like, well, 
I shouldn't say anything, but far from what they look like in junior college and pro. Yeah, and the, one of the issues I find with going to the other extreme is if there's too much systems, then the kids can't grasp what's going on. So, like, for example, when I – the most advanced hockey I played was when I played at the university. At the start of every year when I played, we would have a team meeting and – coach would come in and give us a 30 page or whatever it was document of all of our team systems and we had to know all of them so there's eight different defensive zone coverages there's 15 different breakouts that we do there's 10 different face-off plays that we do this is how our team is going to be playing we have to know these plays and for the team that we I played on in Windsor we had no we were never one of the most skilled teams because the kids that were recruited would often go to bigger name schools. So they would go out East and play for the big name schools or whatever. So the top OHL guys that didn't move on to play pro normally would go like out East or something. So we were always, always ended up being a muck and grind kind of team. So it was very systematized every time, every year that we played, it was very like, this is the system. Everybody does this. There's not a lot of creativity and flow to how we're playing. And so the only reason we could digest all of that information is because all of us had played 10 years of, of hockey at the highest levels and learning different types of systems. So now that we're all 20 to 25 years old, we can digest that information. But I was, we were talking to a coach last year. Yeah. And again, you have something at stake. Like this is again, that, that, the caveat of once you get out of youth hockey and you're playing at higher levels, now you're now people are coaching for their yeah, they're job. They're paying me to be There's here. Money yeah. involved. They're paying you to go to school. They're paying the kids college tuition. They're playing pro. So this is what we have to do. Whether and if you don't do it, then you don't yeah. play. And I, and I remember one of the guys we were talking to one of the coaches last year that coached the I think an 09 AAA team, and he's saying one of the teams they play against that they do that. They have a book of plays that they call, and I'm sure some of it they the kids know some of it. But they can't know all of it. It's not possible. Like their brains are not ready to digest all that information and execute it properly just on a whim of you calling it from the bench in the middle of a game. You know what I mean? So there's there's definitely a balance. I, I understand the uh, intention or the, at least what I think the intention would be by saying no systems is you want to avoid that, right? You want to avoid that extreme. But I... I just as, as I'm thinking, I'm like, I don't know who makes... Like who's... When they come out with mandates for things... Assuming this is it, because like I said, I don't exactly know what the what that meant. But if that means we can't have any structure to how we're playing, like you can't call a player, you can't have a breakout system. Like I don't know what that means. But if it if it is that, then I don't know who makes the rules because that obviously contradicts the position thing. You know, you can't you can't have one without the other. I get you want to avoid the extremes. And even with the position thing, you want to avoid the extremes of, you know, locking kids into one thing, but it's always a balance. It's never, it's never just a none of this and you can't ever do something different than what we say on either side of the coin, whether it's the too much systems, not yeah. enough or, or whatever, you know? So. Well, and how would you enforce this? Oh God. Like that's not enforceable, is it? You can imagine we know coaches that like you take the extreme system guys. Well, now they. <laughs> now they're going there. Okay, they're going to win every game now. System. We'll define even even just define a system. Like, is a breakout a system? It's like I think it's a system, but some people might just be like, no. Like we have to we have to know how to pass the puck out of our end. That's not really a system. So it's like, how do you even define what it is? Like you can't even really strictly put a line on it. So then who the heck? Yeah, who's they got somebody in the crowd every game at every minor hockey game making sure that though you didn't do a face off play like yeah. i don't know well that and you're not developing coaches either you want to you know so i don't know what the level of hockey was that's a good point i want to stick that for a sec you just <laughs> threw, it, threw it out there but yeah you're not developing coaches right like you said like you're not you you mentioned it before but that is what what's effectively happening is if you don't have anything to teach like you're saying before then your coaches in minor hockey can't get any better <laughs> right you have to be able <laughs> to teach something yeah. right so that's a yeah. that's a, a important comment for sure yeah